messages. We didn't answer your phone earlier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His message is really funny. All right. Oh, I was in my. Um... No, no, I meant Saturday. Okay, so. Oh, you left me a message. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I texted you. Yeah, later. Later. A <laughs> hundred years mean? later, Chase finally texted back. Hi. 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 Revolt Tree. I'm Hi. Brad. I'm Leaf. Chase. Josh. I do vocals in the band. Brad plays guitar. Chase plays guitar. And Josh plays bass. This new EP was a big deal for us. I mean, it was our debut, so we really wanted to, you know, focus and get the sound that we felt like would, you know, connect with a lot of people. And it was a sound that we've been really working on over the past year. We worked with Tim Creviston, who is a good friend of ours, and we think we came up with a product that was uh, just like something we really wanted to show, and uh, we're really proud of it. We've been spending a lot of time trying to refine our sound more and more and more. This EP was, a, it was the definition of us finding our sound. And more and more as we grow as a band, even as we've started writing again, um, we're refining it more and more. Blech. I know. Yeah. It's a hard for me too. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what did you guys feel about the EP? It was a long time coming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we put a lot of energy into it and it was, you know, a culmination of like a year and a half or more of writing that we finally recorded and got down and it seems like we've just had all these setbacks and even despite all of those, um, we still managed to pull together something that I think we're all really proud of. Super happy with it, yeah. This EP really meant uh, a culmination of some really fun stories in a very long span of time. Yeah, so if anybody <laughs> wants to talk to us about how crazy making this EP was, like we can't say too much just for like the internet's sake, it would break the internet. Like if you do ever want to approach us and ask like what the process was of making the EP, if you are actually interested, please do hit us up on Facebook and we'll, we'll we will give you the long and short of it. Uh, mostly. Yeah, mostly long. the long. It's pretty long. Like as far as the name goes, like Coven, we're all really big horror buffs. We, uh, I watched a lot of Hammer films when I was younger and a lot of Universal horror films, so I'm like really inspired by the Universal monster movies and other works of Raj Corman, uh, Wes Craven, like all that sort of stuff. I, I love uh, just like the dark gothic sort of atmosphere, especially like um, I'm a really big fan of the game Castlevania, so like having just like all those elements come together to, you know, do something aesthetically that, you know, was more artistically something I'm akin to, especially with Brad as well. like. The original Wolfman, Nosferatu. Yeah, we the we just love all that shit. Uh, these guys were kind of like along for the ride, but like, um, I, I would say you guys were you were pretty on board with the idea of having like a sort yeah. of like horror gothic aesthetic. I liked it a lot. I liked the the witchiness. Mm -hmm. That's a good yeah, word I for super, it. I got super into um, American Horror Story uh, last year. Yeah, last year, yeah, last year. Yeah. Season three was really good. A lot of people didn't like it, but uh, I I was I was a big fan of season three. Thirty one hotel was like awesome. I uh, yeah uh, I still haven't checked it out. So, oh, as far as composing it goes, um, it's actually all of us to write together. Uh, I used to play guitar in a band, so I mean it's not like I just write the lyrics, uh, which I do, but. Uh, we, we do all try to write together. We try to get together at least uh, once or twice a week, not just for band practice, but also to write and record and do d demo tracking for new songs. But uh, a lot of our process is Leaf and I have a lot of riffs. Chase has some riffs as well. Uh, Josh is fairly new to the bass as far as like playing guitar in the band. And uh, it, it's kind of evolving and changing, but we just bring everything to the table and everything we work together on. Unanimously. It's, it's probably Misanthropic. Uh, yeah. Misanthropic is the funnest to play live, it has the funnest chorus, it's super sing-alongy. Uh, we all, you know, get to shine at some part during the song. Uh, As a guitar player, I've spent a good majority of my career just riffing and shredding and this song, I just take a step back and just give her, like... Yeah, definitely. Like, I live, it really shows how much you, you, you guys, like, are having a good time playing. I mean, I, for a long time it was said the Owl to the Vulture, but uh, really after doing the EP, like, uh, Misanthropic came out to be 
the underdog single and now that we're releasing it as like our main track other than walls which we just released with dreambound uh they they've been wonderful and uh we are so excited to have been sharing you know uh, the more experimental side of our music and we hope that you know a lot of people take it into you know like what they feel is the Vulture sound, so you know, we're not really pinned down to anything. Right before we started uh, Send the Alt to the Vulture, uh, last show, Brad hit me in the head with the, in, with the guitar and it cut my head open. And, uh, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time, what yeah. can I say? I learned my lesson I there. I have no idea. Uh, yeah, I also yeah. ended up throwing my guitar after the end of that set and just breaking yeah. the neck. If you check on our Instagram, there's a picture of the broken headstock. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty funny. <laughs> You know the greatest thing about music? It's interpretive. It's interpretive. It doesn't matter what the message actually is. It just matters what you get out of it. Yeah. yeah. But that being said, like, uh, the, the lyrics, like, a lot of people will say, like, and this is not something I have a huge problem with, but I do notice a lot of ba young bands especially, uh, they say that they write lyrics off of, like, life or a particular subject. That's like, I think it's important to like find your center, but like life is so general. I feel like, especially if you have a good life, and I feel like I do have a good life, uh, and I can't have same, a lot of the same experiences that a lot of people have. So I, I take a lot of influence from Jordan Dreher of Let Us Beat, who tells stories. And I think, you know, as a storyteller, it's important to make your stories relatable. And maybe not your life experiences, but like your stories need to be relatable and I think the lyrics on Coven uh, especially like with the topics that they're touching on uh, I feel like they're very relatable. Having Leith as a vocalist it's been uh, really entertaining for me as a musician for as uh, for as aggressive as what we play can be you can actually understand most of what he says and it becomes very hooky in its own sense which makes it really kind of fun to be able to stand there, like let alone on stage, and be able to sing every line back as he's doing it. But you'll actually see kids in the crowd, like, we had only released a couple of demos previously, and I was at this last show able to witness all these kids in the crowd know every single word. Yeah, I actually sing to myself through almost every song. Yeah, I think, like, that's a big thing about playing live is, like, like people aren't like especially when the sound system isn't so good as it's hard for people to hear the words so uh, being clear with what you're saying especially if, if you feel like your lyrics are important and they're an important piece of the music I I encourage you practice getting your vocals clear uh, it, it does wonders for the sound I know the crowd favorite right now is from Lygia uh, which is uh, I see you drowning in a sea of strangers but I think it's just because it's the only line on the album that doesn't have any music behind it, so it's probably the easiest to pick out. Um, I said across the room. <laughs> Still yeah. idea. Yeah, same song. That song has a lot of pause breaks, uh, which I think really benefits it. It really gives it a lot of punch. Uh, walls. To be honest, your entire spoken word part in Walls is very, yeah. is very memorable. And there's a few like really good lines in there. It's uh, it's in Misanthropic. It's uh, your verse. It's. Uh, uh, the Deadwood. Oh, uh... Leaving up your door and... Uh, oh, yeah, it's like, um... I had a heart made of gold, yep. now it's rotting like oak. Deadwood that's fallen on the road that leads up to the front steps of your home and... Yep. Uh, yeah, that's, uh... The, I, I really like spoken words, so I really like try to make my lyrics, like, kind of... Not necessarily, like, rappy, but it's gotta have a rhythm to it. Uh, there's a lot of vocals I listen to, especially on, uh, like, metalcore bands and stuff, which is a lot of the stuff I used to listen to when I was younger. And it's a lot of just, like, drawn-out lines, and, like, there aren't a huge amount of lyrics. Uh, so I like having, like, too many lyrics and trying to figure out how I'm gonna, like, puzzle piece it all together. Uh, it's, Sometimes I look at it and like, it's fucking crazy. Yeah. It's ambitious, for sure. Uh, but as far as like the songs go, Walls is about domestic abuse. Uh, I'm a huge advocate against domestic abuse and domestic violence. I think, you know, it's really important to, you know, talk about these issues and like be able to have provide a safe space for people to, you know, come together and like share stories. And that's really what I want Walls to be about, is to be about the walls that, you know, where we can talk about the things we've done and the things that we shouldn't have done and the ways we can support each other and you know listen so long to the things that we've done.
That that is what this question is about. It is about quoting lyrics, Brad. Thank you. Um, Misanthrope is about running away from home. Uh, Lygia is the story by Edgar Allan Poe uh, about a woman who died, and uh, the the husband sees his dead wife in the eyes of his new wife all the time because she's haunting him. Uh, we're big fans of Edgar Allan Poe, as you can probably tell by the aesthetic of our album. So, uh, so the Alta the Vulture is the last track, and uh, it, it's about like the struggle between you know, being the person that somebody wants you to be and the person that you want to be. Um, everybody's going to tell you what to do. Everybody's going to tell you what to do, but definitely like follow your own path. Don't, don't, don't let anybody put you in a bubble. Be safe, obviously, but don't. Nobody puts me in the corner. Nobody puts me in the corner. Yeah, definitely bring the horizon. Uh, their new album is fantastic. Uh, while she sleeps, Chase and I were really into them for still are. Yeah, the architects as well. Yeah. Uh, we were big. F we I, I actually saw the architects right before we wrote this album, uh, and the in the concert with Being as an Ocean and uh, Straight from the Path and Went to Get Home really blew me away. Like it was one of my first metalcore concerts I'd seen in a long time. So it was it was great to see like these heavy hitters. We were all pushed up against the front. It was oh man, it just inspired me so much to like make something passionate. So uh, Joel from Being His Notion, if you're listening to this, you're the fucking coolest and you should definitely like give me some of your magical beard power so I can be as cool as you. Ghost Inside. Oh yeah, Ghost Inside, Inside. definitely Ghost Inside. Um, and to be honest, like there's been some really decent local bands that we've been playing with for a while. Yeah, um, oh like, god, the you... Body Politic just dropped yeah. their EP a while ago, that was awesome. The, like, the, those guys are... If you haven't had checked out the body politic, definitely go check them out there. Insane. Uh, our friends in Looks Like Rain just dropped a new EP. They're really great. Yeah. Uh, um, this Day Birds is recording a new one. Yeah, our drummer actually plays for uh, another band called This Day Burns. Uh, they they're kind of play like um, new metal, uh, hard rock kind of stuff. They have a female female singer, so it's kind of like Evanescency sometimes, which is really cool uh, to bring that back, that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, uh, we're also big fans of some other bands that aren't around anymore, but uh, you guys know who you are, and I hope that you can get your album out soon. I can think of multiple things to say, and the question is, do you want me to say it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they all have to be with this uh, We're also working on a new album, which... Uh, we can't say too much about it yet because it's still in like we've started writing. Yeah, it's the embryonic <laughs> stages, so like we haven't We're finalized. So very like specific. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little baby. It's like two cells. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially, it's like it's like still time for the morning after pill. <laughs> There's still time. <laughs> Just take two. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, from all of us at Ball Tree, we want to thank you for hosting this interview with us. Uh, big shout outs to Breathing the Core. They're awesome. They have a great website. Uh, check out more of the bands on there. And uh, if you like our music or you just want to bro it out, give us a ring. Bro it out. <laughs> thank you, Breathing the Core. <laughs>